pretty decent article courtesy of the atlantic talking about the great resignation is accelerating courtesy of a guy called derek thompson now this issue i've been kind of thinking about quite often especially in the uk but you know i've spoken about it prior in another podcast about nightlife or night yeah, hospitality or nightlife industry um, jobs. I think there's 86,000 jobs are lost during COVID and a lot of those guys have, and girls haven't come back to their jobs for various reasons. Maybe it's because the you know bars and pubs aren't necessarily as busy as they were in the past so they don't need as many people. Maybe people have moved on to other things, but there's definitely been a shift in terms of how people are basically viewing employment because we've been able to stay indoors for the last what year and a half people's kind of idea on what employment means how much money they need to survive their goals in life what they enjoy most all these kind of things has drastically drastically changed and it's probably changed in ways that are never going to come back again i don't think it's not ever going to be reversible and i think this article definitely does speak on it in a really really clear way so it's courtesy of the atlantic it says the, the title is the great resignation is accelerating so it's says as follows um i noticed that something weird was happening this past spring in april the number of workers who quit their jobs in a single month broke all-time u.s records right economies called it a great resignation but america's quitting spirit was just getting started in july even more people left their job in august quit a set yet another record the great resignation it just keeps getting greater quits as a bureau of labor statistics calls them are rising in almost every industry for those in legend hospitality especially the work must feel like one giant revolving door nearly seven percent of employers um, in accommodations and food services sector left their job in august that means one in 14 hotel clerks restaurant servers barbacks said sayonara in a single month thanks to several pandemic relief checks a rent moratorium student loan forgiveness everybody particularly Particularly if they're young and have low income has more freedom to quit jobs they hate and hop onto something else and that's something i've noticed and i think i've seen a lot in the uk because we have a thing called universal credit which essentially is um the government giving you anywhere between a hundred pound per month to maybe upwards to a thousand right to kind of cover your rent cover your household stuff and whatnot and a lot of people myself included have never well i have never kind of got anything like that in my life because i've been fortunate enough to kind of have savings and be able to work and stuff but a lot of people kind of have have a weird sense of pride of not taking benefits even though you taxes pay for them which i've never really understood i think if i was in hard times and i needed the money of course i'll do it why not but a lot of people haven't and a lot of people have especially in the uk there's not really a time or an opportunity to kind of rest on your laurels and not work especially back in the day before the pandemic everyone's kind of go 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 but it does feel like as soon as the rat race sort of stopped and you weren't racing to go into a central line you weren't racing to go to your office job somewhere you weren't racing to go to lunch and prayer you weren't racing to go to a pub people kind of took took their lives a bit slower relaxed a little bit enjoyed time indoors enjoyed maybe dancing and raving to live streams like i did during parts of the lockdown and whatnot and also realized that maybe their jobs are working that are giving them anywhere between nine eight hundred pounds per month and a thousand two hundred or thousand five hundred they aren't worth it if you're still going to get about the same from the government if the government's willing to pay you 900 pound per month it doesn't necessarily make any sense for you to go and work a job that's going to pay you only 100 quid more and you're working you know like a dog basically right you're working maybe 60 hours per week you know um you're working with horrible people all under horrible management especially if you're working in service industry for the most part you work under shit managers when you do find a decent one you're utterly surprised but all that stress and bother isn't worth it so i think there's a lot of people who never would have kind of seen themselves on benefits who have kind of taken the benefits and maybe said you know what i could use this money to do projects use it to offset a part-time job that i actually want to do which is most people which is why the benefit the kind of universal basic income idea came in the whole idea behind that was let's maybe give people money to kind of cover their bare necessities so that they can go out and use their time to do the stuff they actually want to do it's sort of the idea behind the whole four-hour work week right the four-hour work week was uh, the plan or the idea behind the methodology was basically to create a muse or a business that could generate income in the background whilst you will spend most of your time doing the things you actually enjoyed whether it's kind of you know building a farm raising a family opening a shop whatever that's what the idea behind it it wasn't to just automate everything fulfilled by amazon and just try selling people shitty courses on instagram it was about trying to maximize the time you had available and to, opt to optimize the time you're available to do stuff that you enjoy because life is short that was the whole idea behind it and i think people have realized that during the pandemic like life is short and why would i put my time 
working for nine hundred dollars a month in as a bar back or maybe less, especially with tips included, right? Um, then if I can maybe get a thousand dollars from the government or whatnot and then use that to maybe, you know, give me some money to tie me over as I go and live in a third world country or go to the Caribbean, whatever it may be, people have basically changed that way. So I've definitely seen that in the UK. It continues. As I wrote in the spring, quitting is a concept typically associated with losers and loafers. But this level of quitting is is, is really an expression of optimism that says we can do better. You you may have heard a story that in the golden age of the American labor, 21st century um, workers stayed in one job for 40 years, retired with a gold watch. But that's a total myth. The truth is the people in the 1960s quit their job more often than they did in the past 20 years and the economy was better off for it. Since the 1980s, Americans have quit less and many have clung on to crappy jobs for fear that the safety net would, um, wouldn't support them while they looked for a new one. But Americans seem to be done with sticking it out and they're being rewarded for their lack of patience. Wages for low income workers are rising. Um, at the fastest rate since the Great Recession and the Great Resignation is literally great. That's true because I've seen pictures of advertisements for like a McDonald's and all these other fast food restaurants in America where they're offering crazy um, hourly wages like $15 plus and whatnot. It's like, whoa, that's a pretty decent wage to kind of work in a flipping drive through somewhere or frying some chips and, you know, serving burgers. It's not too bad. So if you're smart about it, you could possibly work there part time, do that on the weekends, collect your kind of bonus, your money from the government and then use that to keep doing the things that you actually want to do and enjoy the thing about quitting which i think is interesting is that it's i'm glad that quitting kind of the you know the black mark against it has sort of gone um because in my career especially i've quit and moved jobs pretty often in my life and it's been a blessing and a curse obviously a blessing in terms of being able to pick up those bits of experience you have a very varied and interesting sort of cv that you kind of use to leverage yourself to get other positions but in terms of actually building a career it's not basically the base thing because it shows maybe some hesitancy maybe a lack of competence competency whatever that word is right it shows that in the cv because it's a little bit erratic but in general there is a little bit of a black mark next to your name if you keep moving or leaving jobs or having to go because someone fired you or whatnot and it's good to see that people are now realizing that jobs are 10 a penny especially nowadays with the lack of people going back to their jobs and essentially and there is far more things in life or better things in life than just being uh, you know um in a job or being an occupation or being sorry um being in employment you know day to day there's far more better things that to do that continues here for workers that is for the far smaller number of employers and bosses who are in the pre-pandemic times where much more comfortable this economy must feel like a leaping into a frying pan of economic chaos only to land in the fryers of manager hell job openings are sky high many positions are going unfurled for months meanwhile supply chains are breaking down because of hydro bottlenecks running a company requires people and parts with people quitting and parts missing it must be kind of suck to be a boss right now oh well the great resignation is not the only great r word overhauling the labor force actually let's go back to that i've always wondered what the thing is about people hating managers everyone's like necessary you know person in their organization maybe it speaks to this idea in the states they have a very they have a weird sort of negative reaction or relationship with landlords and stuff they look at them as like tyrants and there's people that are going to basically you know fleece them out of money and they're there to kind of exploit them or some are obviously but there's a very weird relationship with with um land landlords in general and for i don't know maybe it's me but in uh, most inner cities especially in, in here in london i'd say the majority of landlords especially ones that live in you know especially in the hoods and stuff they're usually working class people who have basically come into a bit of money maybe saved up some money and basically put themselves on a property ladder in terms of trying to help them get from maybe being working class to being middle class but they come from humble beginnings or humble origins they don't they're not usually affluent people that are going to like horrible parts of the neighborhood and buying them out it's mostly just people that look like you and I buying these places. But for whatever reason, in the States, they don't seem to like landlords too much or bosses or managers. I don't know. You don't need to like them, but, you know, you used to recognize everyone kind of serves a purpose. But anyway, continue. Legend hospitality workers might be saying to hell with this on the account of the Americans deciding on behalf uh, to, sorry, to behave like a pack of escaped zoo animals. Call it a great rudeness. Airlines United States reported that by June 2021, a number of unruly passions had already broken records, doubling the previous all-time pace of oriness, as, as we've obviously seen with the videos on the public freakout subreddit. The Atlantic ran to... Why does I keep, I keep pronouncing my words so bad? The Atlantic writer Amanda Mule has chronicled America's epidemic of bad behavior from Trader Joe's tiredness 
from tater jerseys to tirades to a poor Cape Cod restaurant that had to close briefly in the hope that its clientele would calm down after a few days of timeout box. Cabin fevered and filled with rage, American customers have poured into the late pandemic economy with abandon, like the unruling, like the unfurling of so many angry pinch hose, hoses. I don't blame thousands of servers and clerks for deciding that suffering non stop rudeness should never be a joint a job requirement, sorry. And I've definitely seen that video. I think it was a it's like an outdoor bar in it, a Cape Cod place. I'm pretty sure that was it, but it continues here. Meanwhile, the basic terms of employment are under, undergoing a great reset. The pandemic thrust many families into the home-bound lifestyle reminiscent of the 20th century our again economy. But this time, with screens galore and online delivery, more families today work at home, cook at home, care for kids at home, um, entertain themselves at home, and even school their kids at home. The writer Aaron M. Wren has called this the rise of the DIY family, represents a new vision of work-life balance that's still coming into focus. By eliminating the office of a, as a physical presence in many but not all family lives, the pandemic may have downgraded um, work as a centerpiece of their identity, in fact, the share of Americans who say they plan to work beyond the age of 62 has fallen to its lowest number since the Federal Reserve Bank of New York started asking the question in 2014. Workism isn't going all far away. For many, remote work will collapse. The boundary between work and life was once deteriorated by a daily commute. It's now time for a broad reconsideration. Finally, there's a great reshuffling of people and businesses around the country. For decades, many measures of US entrepreneurship declined, but business formation has surged since the beginning of the pandemic and the largest category is by far e-commerce this has coined this sorry this is coincidence um with an uptick in moves um especially to the suburbs of large metropolitan areas several major companies such as twitter have announced permanent work from home policies while others like tesla have moved their headquarters several years ago i wrote that america had lost this mojo because the citizens were less likely to switch jobs move to another state and create new companies um than they were in 30 or 100 years ago well so much for all that america mojo's back baby yeah and it led many to a better job revolution than outlast attempt pre-measures such as underemployment super benefits and rent protection that have already nourished it as a general rule crisis leave as an unpredictable mark crisis is leaving an unpredictable mark on history it didn't seem obvious that the great chicago fire of 1871 would lead to the revolution in architecture and yet without it a doubt contributed to, to the directly to the innovation of the skyscrapers in chicago it might be equally surprised you might be equally surprised that one of the most important scientific legacies of World War II that had nothing to do with bombs, weapons, or manufacturing, the conflict also accelerated development of penicillin and flu vaccines. If you ask me to predict the most sultry long-term effects of the pandemic last year, I might have mustered, uh, sorry, I might have mustered um, something about urban redesign and office filtration. But we may instead look back to the pandemic as a crucial inflection point in something more fundamental. Americans' attitudes toward work. Since last year, many workers have had no reconsideration that the boundaries between boss and work, family time, work time, home and office. One way to capture the meaning of any set of events is to consider what it would mean if they all happened in reverse. Imagine if quits fell to zero, business formations declined in lieu of urban exodus, everybody moved to a dense downtown. It would be, in other words, a movement of extraordinary consolidation and centralization. Everybody working in urban areas to old companies that never leave. Look at what we've been what look at what we have instead. A great pushing outward, migration to the suburbs accelerated, more people quitting their jobs to start something new. Before the pandemic, the office served for so many um, as a physical community left, um, especially as church attendances and association membership declined. But now even a office relationship are being dispersed. The great resignation is speeding up and it's created a centrifugal moment in American economic history. This article kind of repeats itself a million times, but it's a really good one, to be honest, in terms of um, depicting and kind of giving an overview on what most of us are kind of feeling out there in the land of employment and in the land of overall living. And I'm definitely, definitely glad I came across it. <laughs>